What's up guys and welcome back. Today on Trent's Garage, it's gonna look a little bit different in here because we are massively under construction. I'm doing drywall on the ceiling up here, so everything is moved around. I've made a little bit of space here in the shop. What we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna do our full hydro mount, our full hydro skid steer that's gonna go on the front axle. We're gonna get it out of the box, get it welded on, get it ready to go. And then the front axle will almost be ready to be put onto the truck. We're gonna start doing some frame fab here sometime soon because I got the bender fixed. But in today's video, we're gonna focus on the front axle and then getting these exhaust studs in so we can do a little bit of progress on the motor. So these are the studs that are meant for my engine. And these are the studs that they sent me originally. As you can see, they are not even close to the right size. These are like one and a half times larger than those ones. So. Now I've got the correct nuts, I've got the correct studs, I can throw all of those in for my exhaust studs on my exhaust manifold. So I got these headers for this motor off of like eBay. These are the cheapest headers that I could find. Um, they're not like super crazy, high performance, amazing headers, but they're way better than the factory exhaust manifolds. And some of these welds on here look like I probably could have built these better than the people that built these, but I'm not, I'm not here to judge. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw these on. And the reason that I'm putting these on right now is because when we go to put the motor in and we start building the tube frame around the motor, I need to kind of anticipate right where the exhaust and the headers are going to be. Normally I would wait to put these on, but since we're building the frame, I kind of have to have these on ahead of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I would say that those holes are not in the perfect location if I had to guess. But as long as the nuts torque down, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I just need to make sure that they torque down enough that it compresses the gasket and it's not gonna leak. Hopefully that's the case. I've got all six studs into the block with Loctite. I've got the header put on with the gasket. I got all the nuts torqued down. Now we're gonna do the other side. If you guys caught my last video, you saw that I broke one of the studs off the bottom of the engine that holds the oil pan on. And so I robbed a bolt from the other side of the oil pan where I had already compressed the gasket. And I put it in the spot where the stud and the nut broke and I went ahead and tightened it and torqued it down. And then I ordered a new bolt to go in that spot that I removed the bolt from. So I ordered it from Toyota. It's like this, you know, proper spec bolt. I was like, this is gonna be amazing. It was a dollar and 20 cents. And so I was like, that's amazing, no problem. $12 for shipping. That showed up, I went ahead and torqued it into the bottom of the oil pan, so that bolt has been taken care of. I've got both exhaust manifolds on, torqued, everything ready to go with the gaskets. This engine is very, very close to being done. As soon as my pulleys and my idler and tensioner and the uh, power steering pump pulleys show up, I'll get those things thrown on, that's gonna be in the next video. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and push this motor out of the way. We're gonna grab the cherry picker and get our axle out here in the middle of the floor. Then we're gonna unpackage our mount for our full hydro setup. Essentially what's going to take place is this enormous piece of quarter inch steel. This enormous piece of quarter inch steel is actually gonna butt up to the front of the axle and then my hydro ram is gonna mount inside here. Now what that does is it allows this to be a skid plate on the front of the axle so that the hydraulic that sits right here is protected 
protected from rocks and other things that are coming towards the axle. It's a really, really crucial like thing to have because if that ram gets hit, it can break, it can spring a leak, it could get damaged, and then you can't steer. Brandon and I are gonna carry this over and try and set it on the axle. We're gonna see how this goes. So the issue that we're running into is the same thing that you run into with most of these like all for one axle type or these different kits that you can buy that are gussets or hydro mounts or anything like that is there's usually a little bit of manipulation that needs to take place. That's why these aren't really meant for like the guy who doesn't know what he's doing, which I pretty much don't know what I'm doing, but I'm willing to give it a try. I think this hydro mount is actually made for a slightly different axle, an axle with a little bit smaller tubes. And so since my tubes are larger and I already have this truss in place, I think I've got to grind down and kind of cut off the end of the tabs here. Once I cut those off, then our hydro mount will actually sit flush where it's supposed to. And then all of the braces I think will line up. But also there's no instructions that come with this. It just, they just send you all the pieces and they're like, good luck. So you can see right there where that Sharpie line is. That's the corner that I have to cut off. Where I'm cutting that corner off, it's actually overlapping with the truss anyways. So I'm gonna weld that whole end to the truss. So it's not gonna have any lack of structural integrity or anything like that. I'm fairly confident that just cutting off those little edges is gonna allow this thing to fit really nicely. Then I just have to make sure all of my little gussets are gonna fit. I don't have to trim those at all and then we'll be ready to weld. I would say the biggest problem with this is that uh, there's no like guide as to where this is supposed to be as far as like rotation. So I wanna make it line up so that my steering ram is like straight in line with the knuckles where I'm going to be steering. So. I'm gonna go ahead and lift up this end of the knuckle with this jack and uh, make sure that on its turning radius that it's lined up perfectly with where the ram is going to sit. All right, so I've used a lot of different jacks in my day. I have a couple of jacks from Harbor Freight. I've had jacks from AutoZone. I've had really expensive jacks, but a company reached out, Vivor, and they make a lot of different automotive products. And they actually sent me this pneumatic jack, which I've been really enjoying using. I'm gonna show you guys how it works. It literally can pick up like 8,000 pounds, but it's pneumatic. It's like you use air pressure instead of having to jack it. So it's really, really functional. It's not incredibly heavy. It has wheels on the front right there. The handle has a couple of different locking positions, but basically wheel it over into place and then slowly use the lever to inflate. And that's exactly where I want it. So like I said, this thing will pick up like 8,000 pounds. So this truck is like 8,500 pounds and this pneumatic jack had no problem lifting up the front end, which is where all of the weight is. That's where the Cummins engine is. It's got a big solid axle. It's got 37s. This thing is no match for it. It's an absolutely super impressive jack. So when you're done using the jack and you want to lower it, all you do is flip this little lever, slowly let the air pressure out, and it'll start to lower itself. Let me just say that compared to having to jack and jack and jack when you're trying to jack up a car or a truck or something really heavy, being able to just flip a little switch to inflate it, to lift things up, that's really useful for me. 
Vivor has a lot of different products that you guys can choose from. They're a pretty cool website. I've actually never used them before besides this product, but they sent this to me and I'm actually really impressed with it. So if you guys are interested in picking up one of these jacks, Vivor is actually doing an amazing deal for my viewers. If you click the link in my description and use the discount code VVJack10, you'll actually get 10% off one of these Vivor jacks. So I'll go ahead and check them out. And now that I've got this knuckle jacked up, we're gonna get back to work and get this truss mounted. Now I've got a flap wheel here. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all of the edges here where I'm gonna be welding and then get this thing set in place. We'll get it tacked, double check everything, and then we'll fully burn it in as long as everything looks good. Do our final test fit, make sure everything is gonna work. And All right, so the ends of that are tacked in place now. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna tack a couple of these gussets in place. So this is my, my ram. This is the full hydro setup. And the ram will get mounted like right here. And then it pushes back and forth and that's what actually steers the truck. There's a couple of mounts and I need to figure out right where those mounts are gonna go so I don't put these gussets in the way. That could be a big problem. I don't actually know how this works. I was thinking I was gonna have to like drill holes and do all kinds of stuff, but these actually just weld on. That's gonna make it that much more of a pain in the butt because I gotta make sure this thing is perfectly straight, perfectly symmetrical, and that's a little scary. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these mounts, these clamps, on the actual ram, and then I should be able to set them in the ram mount and make sure that they're perfectly in there, flat, symmetrical, going in the right direction, and then I can tack them in place, and then once we know that's good, we can fully weld them in. I cannot take this big heavy ram and like hold it upside down on the hydraulic ram mount because it's not gonna be like functional. I won't be able to see if it's like straight. So I kind of need to tip the axle so that the ram mount is like laying a little more flat so that I can set this in there and let gravity hold it so that I can make sure it's like perfectly straight and parallel to the actual axle tube. And hopefully when I do that, the knuckles don't just like swing out of control, but. You never really know, so we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, this is gonna be pretty difficult, but you're gonna kinda like grab the, the front of the brake, like this, and we're just gonna rotate this up until I can get the, the differential on that. Working with stuff like this, it's not nearly as imperative for things to be like, you know, within the hundredth of an inch and things like that as when you're like rebuilding an engine where you're dealing with machined parts. This is just steering. So like even if this hydraulic ram was like out of angle, you know, by a degree or two, the himes and like all of the angles of the steering would make up for it and you would never know the difference. I'm just trying to make it as good as possible. I'm trying not to make a piece of junk here. And uh, so I'm kind of taking my time and being really meticulous about this and trying to measure everything and make it perfectly symmetrical. But even if it's out by a little bit, it'll still work just fine. You'll never know the difference. So I think I've got everything marked and in the spot that I need it to be in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start welding in the ram mount to the axle housing. And once I get it fully welded in and I get these gussets all welded on, then I'll get my ram back out. I'll put it up on the ram mount and tack it in place. And if it looks good, I'll fully weld those plates on and we'll be in business. I 
do have to say that uh, a lot of these welds are not looking so hot. And that's mostly because a lot of these gussets are like at weird angles and it's hard to get like a pattern going and it's hard to control your puddle and those are all excuses. Um, I'm not doing an amazing job of welding today. But we are getting it done. I've got these two gussets completely welded in. I've got my two end gussets completely welded in. Uh, I need to weld the actual truss mount to the bottom of the axle. There's like five or six places where it attaches to the axle on the bottom. I need to do those beads. And then I think we can actually put our ram in and get it tacked in place. Once it's fully welded, I think I'll be able to put the last gusset in place and get it welded as well. So, making progress. Looking pretty good, Trent. What do you say? It's almost done. That's all I care about. How come you're putting the bolts in? Well, I'm just gonna throw these bolts in here so that when I weld those those plates on, I don't have any spatter jump into one of the holes and mess up my threads because there's not really a way to send like a tap through there because it's not open on the bottom anymore. So I'll just put the bolts in there. If spatter lands on these threads, that's fine because those sleeves don't have threads in them. They're just a sleeve. So the bolt will just pass right through into those threads. Those are the threads that are important. Now I'm gonna crank the welder up, burn these things in. This is the most crucial part of the entire hydraulic ram like mount is where the ram mounts because that's where all the force is like pivoting is on these two little brackets. So got to make sure that there's a lot of penetration and that the welds are very strong. This is the most important part of this entire job, so hopefully it goes well and here it goes. Right now, somebody that has experience doing this would have mounted those first and got them fully welded on before they welded on these gussets. Because that gusset was in my way of getting this weld done. But I can also tell that by the way that this plate is turning that blue color right there, she's real hot. Which means we're getting a lot of penetration. It's looking really good. Should hold. Oh yeah. All right, I think I have finished welding for the day. This thing is fully mounted, fully welded. It's burned in. There's really nothing left to do. I think uh, this axle is almost ready. Well, I would like to paint it so that it doesn't start to rust. But then I just have to grind the paint off to do all of my like uh, linkage mounts when I go to do the four link. So it'll have to wait for paint, but I can now set it aside. And we know that this axle is ready to be thrown under the front end of the truck and have some links welded onto it. And then it's ready to rock, baby. Really pleased with the way it turned out. So there's two steering arms here. There's the steering arm that's attached to the knuckle, and then there's this steering arm that's bolted on the top of the knuckle. Now, with traditional steering, this bolt hole right here would connect to the other knuckle, and that would be your tie rod. This bolt hole here would connect to your steering box. So when you steer the steering box, it would steer back and forth. Now, with other axles that aren't the Ultimate Dana 60, there's bolts on the top of both knuckles. So you can actually get these extra plates that bolt on here in place of this that line up directly above this bolt hole. And then you can put one giant like grade eight bolt in there and you can connect that to your hydro steering. And that way you're gonna re reduce the amount of shear force that's gonna be on this single bolt down here at the bottom by bracing it on the top and making it much more rigid. The problem is on the driver's side, you have to drill and tap these three bolts into a giant cast iron knuckle, which is going to be very difficult and very strenuous. And I am not going to be happy about it. And hopefully I even have a drill bit that can do it and I don't burn up the drill bit trying to drill those three holes. If we do get that done, I can mount the bracket that goes on top of that knuckle and then we'll have almost everything we need to set up our full hydro steering. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, control arm up here and get it popped off and get the new one thrown on and then we'll start assessing what needs to take place on that side.
So these are cone washers. There's one on each bolt. And when you compress those and torque that bolt on top, it goes down into a tapered fitting right there and holds it in place. Uh, I've got one out of three. Basically just need to figure out how to get those other two out. And usually the answer is just keep beating on it with a hammer. Yep. Usually it doesn't happen that quickly. So this piece here is a piece that I had made from, I believe the guy's name is Harris Metalworks. He designed this kit. It's not like a big production kit. He just makes one if you ask him. So I sent him an email and I said, hey, make me one of those double shear kits for an Ultimate Dana 60. He sent me all the parts and I'm hoping that throwing this thing together is gonna be exactly what I need. All right, well, looks like we might be uh, stopped dead in our tracks. I don't have a tap that is big enough for these studs. So since I don't have the tap, I don't even know what size drill bit that tap requires. So I guess I'm gonna have to email the guy that made this kit and ask him what size drill bit and what size tap I need for this, and I'll have to order those. We'll be able to do it another day. Well, I think that is probably gonna do it for us today. And in the next episode, I should probably have all of the parts that I need to finish the engine assembly and get the transmission put on that thing. Then we can start maybe building a table that's gonna support the engine. We can lower the body down around the engine and start building the rest of the tube frame. Not exactly 100% sure if that's what we'll do next time, but that's kind of what I'm hoping for. So if you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure today and watching us get this, uh, hydro ram mount <laughs> mounted on the axle. Let me know in the comments. Also, if you guys have any other comments or you wanna leave a like, I'd appreciate that too. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys on the next one.